Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to my tutorial series on the game From the Depths. Now, today I'll be covering a couple different topics, um, one of which was suggested by several different people that I cover in a little bit more detail. And the other is something that I wanted to get to in the last video, I believe, but I didn't quite have time, and that's missiles. Uh, first, I'm going to be starting out with the requested... Um, which are laser optics, and a little bit more on how laser turrets work. Like, the actual turret part. Uh, I covered how to build all that mumbo-jumbo back here in my laser tutorial video. If that was unclear, or if you didn't watch it and you're wondering how to build it, I'll, you know, you can just find that. I'll probably link it in the description or something like that if you're interested in watching how to build something like this monstrosity here. And, um... Yeah, so to recap the turret points that I talked about in the laser tutorial, to connect it, the laser monstrosity producer thing over there, to the actual turret, the weaponized form, I recommend using these laser transceivers because they're just really nice. And to do that, you have to have one block here connected to the mainframe using things that I discussed before, these laser connectors. And you have to have it pointing up or in whatever direction your turret is. And another laser transceiver on the turret itself. Now, I mentioned before that you should probably have it centered. Well, it depends on how you oriented it. But you need to orient it in a way so that when the turret moves, it will never disconnect. And since this is right above the turret, like the turret base, the rotating part, it will always stay connected no matter what direction I point it. So, yeah. That's, like, the very basic for basic step for setting up the laser. As you can see, this is all connected up. From there, you have to uh, use some way to connect up the transceiver to these laser combiners. This is what actually weaponizes the, um, the laser beam. It's basically the firing piece of the custom cannons. The laser combiner is the firing piece. It's a good analogy there. And now, for the part that was a little confusing for some people, are these laser optics. Now, I I threw on a bunch, like a really long laser optic thing, just to demonstrate. Laser optics help decrease the wander. It doesn't increase the range. It decreases the wander. It decreases the variation, which is why I expanded this so far out. So I can show you what I'm talking about here. See, I can go to my binoculars, and you see how little wander there is? It looks like there's a lot, but I'm zoomed in quite far. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of laser wander. It's being very accurate, and will do a fair amount of damage even pretty far out. Now, let's do the same thing, but um, we're going to get rid of some of these regular optics. Just delete these mother truckers here. And screw it, let's just have uh, one. And then a little bit of steering optics. The steering optics are pretty self explanatory. Um, I'll demonstrate that after this little thing here. But, and this is what happens when you have a really short, a uh, really short laser optic thing. They're zoomed in the same amount. You see how much more wander there is on the laser. It's just kind of shooting off in all directions. And if there's a target out there at my crosshairs, it's not really going to be hitting it. Like, not at all. So that's where the extra laser optics come in. You have to kind of take into account how much room you have and how much space you actually want to take up. But just know the more laser optics you have down the more, the less wander you will have. And I say increases the range, but that's not technically accurate. It increases the effective range by decreasing the wander, is what I should have said. Now, these laser steering optics, they l allow you to shoot up and down. Let's see, see how I can shoot that high up with just a couple of those steering optics? The steering optics allow you it's like barrel movement. Like, say you have a stationary custom cannon, it, the barrel can move around a bit on its own. And depending on the different types of barrels that you're using, move around less or more in different directions. That's basically what uh, the steering optics are. 
It'll allow you to reflect it up. In the setup I had before, I could shoot almost straight up in the air without even looking up. But let's see what happens if I get rid of these steering optics here. Steering optics. Okay, now it's just a single laser optic, and you're going to really notice a difference. Notice I try to look up, and it just won't fire. It can only fire straight because these... Ah, stop moving. The laser optics don't have any way to turn the laser, to point it in a different direction. It can only fire straight ahead where the turret is facing. So in that way, I see I'm having trouble even getting it to go because it has to be perfectly straight. Or pretty darn close to perfectly straight. And again, if I just take... Frick! Frick! Okay, there we go. So I just take more of these uh, laser steering optics and throw them onto the front. Just a shit ton. Yeah, we're just gonna go nuts. Alright. You will notice I can shoot very high up in the air. I couldn't do that before. Now this is probably a little bit overkill in the steering optics, but you get the point. Steering optics help you turn the laser. Laser optics decrease the wander of the laser. I hope that's pretty clear now. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to touch on one more thing here, the laser missile defense. Now, if we go up into lasers and laser missile defense, shit, it says in the description, I think my face cam might be covering it, but the laser missile defense connects onto the multi-purpose laser and uses its beams when necessary to shoot down the missile. Use an AI missile warner component to spot the missiles. So basically, um, these laser missile defense have to be hooked up to the laser generator over there. And that's why I have these laser connectors hooking up to this. Now, the um, AI Missile Warner that they mentioned is under the AI tab, and it's right here. The Missile Warner component spots missiles within a hemispherical field of view. Use a laser, laser missile defense block to shoot them down. Requires line of sight to the missile to spot them, and does not detect missiles that are below one half a meter above sea level. So you have this Missile Warner. You hook it up to the AI in some way, using AI six-way connectors. Um, and, yeah... I've kind of covered already how to connect things up to the AI mainframe. You just use that method or something that works for you to connect the missile warner to the mainframe, and assuming that your turret, your laser turret, is connected to the mainframe as well, and being controlled by it, it will shoot down missiles that it detects. And it's really useful, I highly recommend it. Alright, so that took quite a bit more time than I thought. I usually get a little sidetracked. But, missiles. I decided I'm just going to build one really quick from the ground up and explain as I go. So, first things first, let's make a little bit more of a, um, a little platform here to build on. Yep. Alright, that's better. Alright, so we're going to go to new object. We're going to go to turret. Now, this doesn't really matter because you can choose whatever kind of turret you, your heart desires. And there we go. I'm just going to build a very basic missile turret. It's just going to be enough to show you how things work. So I'm just um, doing my thing here. Missile controller. Every missile block needs a missile controller. From there, you can use missile six-way connectors to drag it out and have multiple uh, missile launch pads like this that you can place down. So in case I was going too fast for you guys, I place the turret, I have a single block on top of it, just, you don't necessarily have to do that, it's just a habit that I'm in. And then from there I can, like, build up a shell of armor around it. Something like this, you know. Oh god. Yeah, something like that. I kind of accidentally deleted the wood block, but, you know, you can drag it out and just kind of encase your missiles in there, however you want. And... Again, recapping, so you place the turret, wood wood block or something, and then uh, you need a missile controller. The missile controller is, again, kind of like your firing piece. From there, uh, as long as you have these AI, these missile six-way connectors, excuse me, I did not mean to say AI, um, from there, 
you can take missile launch pads and place them on your six-way connectors and even your missile controller itself. Now on top of these launch pads you can add missile blocks. You can make them as long or as short as you want depending on the kind of missile that you want to build. I'm just d doing that length. Uh, yeah, so there we go. We already have a basic missile launcher. Now there's all sorts of other blocks that you can play around with. Um, things like missile laser emitters that can be placed on top like this and then when I take control of the missile turret it will point at a direction and it's used for different types of missile seekers that I'll get be getting into in a, a minute or two here. That I'll, yeah. Uh, other fun things you can do you have these ejector add-ons that will... I'll just read you the description. The ejector add-on is used to propel the missile forward at launch. Up to four can be added to a single launch pad and the effects stack. They'll just make it fly out faster. I already talked about the laser emitter. Identify friend or foe. This is really good. It, um, as you can see in the description, maybe. My face cam might be blocking it. It's a it's used to stop heat-seeking and sonar missiles from targeting friendly units. So I I often use heat-seeking missiles, so I always make sure I have one of these on. And oftentimes I like to use these staggered fire add-ons um, that staggers the fire, as you might have guessed. Uh, and they are stackable, so if I have one here set to 0.5 and another one here set to 0.5... And then I go to fire this. You can see the missiles will fire at that interval that I had set. And if I get rid of these auto, f the staggered fire add-on. And real quick, I need to add some ammunition to the uh, little platform here. <clears throat> so now that I got rid of them, I fire. They all go at once. I much prefer having it so that they stagger fire. It kind of increases the efficiency of it. I mean, you can build them however the hell you want, but just me personally, I like to use the staggered fire. A lot. I usually have two set up like this, with uh, each with 0.5 second delay. Now for the actual missile itself. All you have to do, it can be in build mode, it can be you just looking at it in first person, or in the third person, like, moving camera thing. You just look at it and hit Q. Now this brings up the missile design interface, and from here you have different tabs. You have the edit tab, which we're in right now, where you can design a missile. Each missile block that you placed will be a part of the missile that you can customize to how you see fit. You can also load save designs. This is where you save created designs, and this is a back button that kicks you out of the menu. You probably could have figured that out on your own, but uh, fuck it, I do what I want. So here we are. This is a... This actually is a laser designator receiver. This over here is the list of all the parts you could possibly add. And over here is the current design, as you can see with the um, labels here. So these missiles here, they have a laser designator receiver, an explosive warhead, target prediction guidance, two units of fins, two fuel tanks, and one short-range thruster. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the, uh, the target prediction guidance is not really worth it on a laser designated receiver because the laser designated receiver will aim at the missile at whatever the missile laser block is pointing at. And there's all sorts of different guidance systems. Uh, this backwards facing missile receiver will follow the beam of the missile laser block useful for engaging fast air targets, and the laser does not have to point at the target until the terminal stages, meaning you can point it at it at the last minute. Ba -ba -ra -ba -ra -ba. There's, you can also build missile interceptors. I mean, there's just a whole shit ton of stuff. But the basics that you want for a missile is you want some way to track a target. The most basic being just a uh, an IR seeker, infrared seeker, a heat seeker, which I can add there. To make it more advanced, you can add a camera to that. And then when you click on this block some of these blocks you have different uh, options like the fuel 
short range thruster, you have different max durations. The camera for the IR seekers only. You can drag this little bar and it'll say it'll aim at different things. Uh, if I had to add a fragmentation warhead to right there, let's say, you can change the, the angle of the cone, the elevation offset, and of course all sorts of different stuff. The You can get fairly complex with the missile design, but for right now, if you're just starting to build missiles, I really suggest just going with infrared and making sure you throw on a um, an IFF, a Identify Friend or Foe system on it. And that will get you going. And from there, you know, you need to have some fins because fins help you help it seek target. Fins provide maneuverability, important for a seeking missile, beam rider, or laser designated missile, missile. especially important against high velocity targets. So you just kind of use your judgment on this. Like, if it's just going to be an anti-ship missile, you probably don't need as many fins than if it's an interceptor missile made to shoot down aircraft or other missiles. So, with all that in mind, just um, kind of experiment. I'll be doing more advanced tutorials on how to build different types of missiles later. But, again, to recap for missiles, I would just go with uh, an IR seeker, some warheads, some one or a couple fins and a fuel tank and a short range thruster and that will get you going and once you know the basics you can build on that expand on that do all sorts of fun shit with missiles including these cable drums that let you build harpoon missiles which i will probably be covering later because they're so much fun but that's just about all the time i have for today so i want to thank you all for watching and until next time this is ryan from stromboli games signing off Thank <laughs> you.